Hello YouTube, this is Philip20 again today and what I've got for you is a simple test. I have a 80 to 108 microfarad 330 volt 50 or 60 hertz capacitor. Okay, and the rated temperature for this is 65 degrees Celsius. That's pretty hot. I don't know what it is in uh, standard Fahrenheit, but it, that's pretty hot. So I want to do some tests. Here is our capacitor. If you can't see it, it says. Eighty-eight to one hundred and eight. Now, this device right here is a device that I use for auditing my house power consumption. This is a bit different than what you'll find as a uh, kilowatt meter. So a kilowatt meter is probably a lot better than this. Um, this is a simple test. For electricians that you know heat pump technicians or refrigeration technicians as well uh, to check power consumption of a heater for like a wall air conditioner or heater uh, you know making sure everything's drawing the correct amount of amperage now this one has a specific location that you can test there's X1 which means one revolution of wire that is rotated inside of this piece that would be considered connecting the power consumption just like that. So, if we do that, we'll have, uh, what you'll see is 0 0.5 amps. Okay, now you would say, okay, 0 0.5 amps, that's, that's nothing, no big deal. But then, you come over here, and do a quick test of the voltage okay so you got a voltage test for your test leads right here once you got your voltage test leads in you flip it over and then it shows 116 volts so if we do 0 0.05 times one one six and that's five point eight watt power consumption that uses more watt power just plugging this in than it does to run my kitchen lights my kitchen lights use less power than that right there so we know it's 116 volts. Now, I tested it right here with this 1X. Now we got a 10, it's a X10, X1, X10. Let's see if we get a different reading with it. that right there. So since it's got 10 revolutions inside of there of the power wire, it's showing us 0 0.71. And that means it's 0 0.71 multiplied by 10. So this number had been multiplied 10 times. So instead of doing 0 0.7, 0 0.73 amps, it's point. 0, 073 you divide that 10 times okay and that's going to tell you 0.73 amps which we said it was 5.8 watts with 116 volts it's 0 0.073 that's instead of 5.4 watts it's 8.4 watts and this capacitor is starting to get hot. I can feel the temperature on it. I'll be right back with a thermal imaging camera. All right, this is the capacitor. And look at that. That thing's getting really hot. What is that? 110 degrees almost? 109? 110? 
So we know we're consuming power, right? Just by plugging this capacitor in. 8.4 watt power consumption. Now, in perspective, this type of setup would not add additional capacitance to my refrigerator if I installed it. And there's a reason for that. Um, this capacitor has a frequency that goes up and then down and then up and then down because that's why it's getting hot. That's why we're getting hot. We're using the capacitance continuously. And that is consuming power to change the frequency of the alternating current, which happens 60 times a second. And that means you're going to be taking, you know, 60 times a second back and forth to 115. 116 volts okay adding a capacitor to a circuit like this is not only dangerous because it gets hot and it could explode depending on how you put it in if you put it in a metal box and ground the box it's probably fine but if you don't ground the box and this thing gets hot enough it's going to explode because it's under continuous load and it never tries to shut down these capacitors are supposed to be in line to a start circuit to a motor and your standard box fans would not benefit from this your uh, dc motors now they could benefit from direct current because it doesn't change the frequency up and down every 60 times a second it stays the same uh, polarity so the polarity reverses in alternating current back and forth 60 times a second whenever you set it up and you run it the only thing you're doing is powering the capacitor back and forth it's discharging and charging 60 times a second so remember 8.48 uh, 8.468 watts of power consumption out of a 88 to 108 microfarad capacitor now you got to remember the voltage is 330 voltage alternating current it will charge fully to the 88 to 108 microfarad at 330 volts alternating current this is 110 volts alternating current right here so since i'm running less than a third of the power that this capacitor runs at Oh, well, you know, a little more than a third. I mean, it's pretty close to a third, but we're only using one third of the capacity because the capacitor will not charge until it reaches the maximum voltage, that it, uh, damaging voltage, which is 330 volts on this one. You would never want to exceed 330 volts on this capacitor because it's going to uh, shoot right through the... Uh, there's a there's a median inside the capacitor. I can't remember the name of it, but it's going to damage it if you go past 330. So you're looking at a power consumption device. It's doing nothing but consuming the power in my house. It does not add capacity because it's discharging and charging 60 times a second, and it's only continuously making a load on the inverter so is this something i would put in my house no there's something else that you could use it's called a hard start capacitor if you're having trouble starting your compressor there's a device called a hard start i'll go get one for a heat pump and show you this this here is a super boost hard start capacitor it's a Subco brand, which is a very reliable brand. For severe low voltage or hard starting compressors. So if your system has a lower voltage than what is ma mandatory to run an air conditioning system, you can use this. 
to start it because it might may not start and what's nice about this capacitor it is a 277 VAC so and it'll run one through five horsepower motor okay now this is designed for a heat pump this is designed to plug into a 230 voltage alternating current circuit uh, no wiring changes are necessary to this type of system. If I was to t connect my system to this, what I got to do is plug these two terminals in to the run the hermetic for the compressor and the uh, common. So your hermetic would go here and common would go here. The benefit of this is it will start your compressor quickly. The drawbacks of this is it will kill your compressor quickly. <laughs> so, I mean, over a period of time, you're gonna lose your compressor's resistance inside of the start windings, which is gonna kill it. And nobody wants their compressor to go bad because they're expensive to replace. So, if you take in consideration of this, what's special about a hard start versus just a capacitor? This thing's getting nice and hot now. Let's... The special thing about a hard start is it has a relay inside of here. This box, inside of this box, there's a relay. This relay detects load from the capacitance. This load only turns on for a very short period of time and then turns back off when it's completed the load. A load, I'm talking about lock rotor amps. Lock rotor amps is a certain amount of uh, amps that the system will draw during startup. You'll have running load amps, which is the amount of amps the system should not exceed, and then lock rotor amps, which is the amount of amps that you should have during startup. So let's talk about running load amps. Running load amps is something simple. It's a straightforward picture of how much energy the compressor should not exceed. So if you ever go past that, it means either you got a uh, condenser coil that's very dirty or you got it overcharged, which nobody wants an overcharged system. So let's say lock rotor amps here. I put my test lead on one of the wires right there, okay? And then I tie this capacitor into that capacitor right there. It will draw a good amount of power. It'll draw it quickly. Let's see if we can test. So in all real world aspects, adding a capacitor to a 115 volt circuit is not a good idea. The reason is because you're consuming energy and just for even a very short period of time, you're creating a lot of heat. In just a second, I'll show you again the thermals. I mean, who needs heat in their house? First, you got to remove it, and then you know it's not beneficial if you have a hard time starting a compressor use a hard start these are designed to start compressors if you need help with finding a hard start give me a call I'll show you what to look for for your application thank you again this is Philip 20 with guns games and racing and I will hard start y'all later <laughs>